What's the one thing you regret doing for your wedding day? Not using a cut-down version of the first dance song. Nearly seven minutes of two people dancing to a song that was effectively meaningless to everyone else. Should have made a two or three minutes version. Having a large bridal party and getting ready with them. I wanted two and my husband wanted eight. My husband won. Originally. We were all going to get ready at my parents' vacation condo so that my mom, who was terminally ill, could be with us. About a month before. My mom asked that we get ready somewhere else so that she could get some rest before the ceremony. I made arrangements for us to get ready at a different location. I was so caught up in getting the bridal experience and getting ready photos, etc., that I never stopped to think that maybe I should just get ready with my mom. Now that she's gone, I wish that I had. My wife invited a bunch of people back to our room at the end of the evening. I'm never going to let her live that down. The one regret I have for our wedding turned out to be one of the best things about it. A co-worker who Jeed volunteered to play music at our wedding for no cost we were fine with that. Three days before the wedding. I am on vacation getting everything together. My boss calls me to say my co-worker gave their notice and they are moving out of state the next day. WTF? He wasn't going to tell me and wasn't going to be there to DJ. What ended up happening is I found out how much my co-workers at the time respected me. As they pooled money together and hired a DJ on two-day notice for our wedding. So. It's kind of hard to regret that. But yeah. Kids. Don't hire someone too cheap or free to do anything for your wedding. You will absolutely get what you pay for. Sleeping the night before at my sister-in-law's house. I wanted a hotel room but she really wanted us there. I slept on a twin-size futon with a 6 feet 4 inches. 230 pounds monster with some serious snoring issues. By slept. I mean drifted for about an hour and then stared at the ceiling all night. I was so fucking tired all day. Not telling the photographer to back off sooner. Every 10 minutes they were pulling us out of the reception to take additional pictures. We missed like one third of our wedding because of it. Oh and they never took the family photo. What do you consider to be the biggest scam that is completely normalized by society? Companies not disclosing salaries on job listings and encouraging staff not to discuss pay. It only benefits the employer. But everyone goes long with it. The easy to join, difficult to cancel subscription model. Detox drinks. Ticketmaster. Fuck Ticketmaster. Printer Inc. Every single company that sells printers sells them at a loss. They then make up their profits by making their ink cost an arm and a leg. They even put special chips on each cartridge that will tell the printer not to work if it has been refilled. The whole thing really. People who've befriended the quiet kid in school. What things did you wish your other classmates knew about them? He talks a lot, even more than I do. He's just quiet at school. He took his time talking. It was unnerving at first but then kind of cool. Like he actually thought about every response he made and how those responses could be perceived. People can be cruel and pushy though because he seemed slow. It could be pretty bad. I wish my classmates knew that this quiet kid now visits me weekly at the restaurant I work for in. Orders his usual. He was the kid with a special instructor in each class. Made fun of for it. Among other things. Now he is independent and works, lives on his own. We bond over anime and Kingdom Hearts. Which I tend to play the music of over the loudspeakers at work when he comes by. Edit. Thank you for my first awards. D give an old friend or the quiet kid a hello. Ya never know what bond may come of it. She was just shy because of her stutter. She ddnt smell like they said and was insanely smart. 
She got married last Saturday and I was her mo. Edit. Thank you for the awards. They're not up to something, just because they're quiet. And yes, they're fine so stop asking them if they're okay or mad at you. The quiet kid at my school was one stupidly rich too was wicked into superheroes 3 he was just a all-round good kid. You get to go into any fictional universe for 30 days. Anything you buy, skills acquired, etc. will be transferred to the real world. With zero repercussions. Where do you go? No man's sky. Just go from station to station buying and selling all their cobalt. Come back with millions and enough cobalt to flood the earth market. Only to buy it out and keep moving on. So do I start with nothing? Basically I have 30 days to acquire enough of whatever currency to buy whatever I'm taking back. Can I steal something and bring it back? Are cheat codes allowed? Because if cheat codes are allowed then Sims 4. Underscore any, underscore fictional universe? Opens Microsoft Word. The Matrix and I download loads of skill sets into my mind then come back. I would go into Adventure Capitalist and come out with Duo Deidre Hexa Quintillion Dollars. People born on the 24th of July. How does it feel celebrating 24-7? Keeps people guessing if you tell them your birthday is 24-7. July 23rd here. At least I have an hour off every day from celebrating. It would get so tiring to celebrate non-stop. Cries in American date format. Been doing it for 24 years now, it's pretty lit. The 24th of July birthday gang unite. My parents got married on the 24th of July, so they've been married 24-7. What did the weird kid at your school do to be called the weird kid? He carried around a massive tub of Vaseline all the time. Like, not a little five ounces thing, but something that you would get in bulk at Costco that took up his entire backpack. The school tried to get him treatment for mental health problems. But his parents refused and technically he hadn't been caught doing anything that would warrant a CPS investigation. I'm still FB friends with him and while he's still odd. He's at least getting mental health care and has his own place and a steady job. He was obsessed with mushrooms. Like, as a botanist. Not for recreational drug use. I think 90% of all conversations with him either started out or were directed towards being about mushrooms I actually really liked him. Because he was genuinely nice. If a bit single-minded and socially awkward. And incredibly enthusiastic. Unfortunately at the time I was too physically small to directly do much of anything about the people who bullied him. And the teachers were absolutely useless when I would try to get their help. I hope he's doing well today. He would look at photos of girls on his laptop with a weird smile during health class. When the teacher talked about reproduction. Sniffed people and growled like a dog. Generally acted like a dog and such. This was about when furries became a thing so. Hindsight 2020 definitely a furry. It was me. During recess some kid came up to me and punched me in the face. I immediately thought, don't cry. Weird him out so he goes away, so I said to him, that was fun. Do it again, and he looked at me funny and told all his friends. So from then on I was the weird kid and would sometimes egg it on to see their reaction. It worked out in the end. I was never going to be the popular kid so I could do whatever I wanted. To introduce ourselves we were supposed to answer, what superpower do you want and why? And he said, time control, alright cool but then he began explaining why. With this power I can rape someone and go back in time to get away with it. What's the worst thing you can do on a first date? Bring your wife. 
I had just left a long-term relationship and quickly started dating someone else. Just a few weeks into dating I learned she had a birthday coming up. So the evening of her birthday. We went out to celebrate with a nice dinner. She sprung a question on me I wasn't expecting. She asked if I would say, Grace. My mind scrambling. I quickly decided that it being her birthday I was going to need to squeeze a mentioning of her. Into the prayer over the meal. I envisioned something like, Thanks for this food. And thank you for less than my girlfriend's name greater than. Don't ask me. It made perfect sense at the time. So we both closed our eyes and clasped our hands as I started to pray. As I started to pray. I didn't say her name. I said my ex-girlfriend's name. That was a quiet meal. A woman told me she loved me on the first date. Turns out she was stalking me on social media for about six months prior to meeting in person. Go on and on about past relationships. That's a huge red flag and a big no for me. Be a half hour late. Don't order any coffee from the coffee shop you picked. Spend several hours walking around downtown telling your date about everything you hate. I drove home cursing my life. Take off your coat and put it over a puddle apparently. Subscribe my brothers.